So I'll holster up for a sec. <laughs> we finished the shoe. So next we scan. What do we scan? So the environment. Okay. Why are we doing that? Make sure there's no additional threats. Okay. So we do need to scan. You have to. But the scanning that everybody's taught in North America, A, it's the wrong order. There are three things you have to do, and that is the last one. It's environmental threat scan. Two, it's not done properly. Number one, in North America, I want you guys to give me a case study wherever there was an incident where a police officer was engaged, engaged back, the shooting was done, after the shooting was done and that primary threat went down, another threat popped up with a gun and re-engaged the police officer. Anybody give me an example? I'm not testing. I'm actually asking. I'm, I'm, this is what I do. Everywhere I go, I bug people by asking them why and prove it. Give me an example. I don't know of any such incident in which that has occurred. In every case that has happened so far in North America, where there were more than one threat, they both produced themselves and engaged at the same time. Understand? Do you know when this came to be? Because all of a sudden, the whole world went to Iraq. In Iraq, just like Afghanistan, just like in Gaza, Lebanon, do we have to worry about many threats in one environment, Mike? Yes, because we're in the we're in the ant farm. We're in their territory. We crashed their party. They are all over the place, setting up ambushes, waiting for us every step we take. There's many of them around. In North America, that doesn't exist. However, let me tell you what does happen in North America. What has gotten police officers killed in North America in engagements? Is that police officers will be in an engagement. The weapon is empty or the weapon is jammed. They stop to shoot because they figure the threat is down because the threat went down, repositioned. Threat resurfaced and the officers are now engaging the threat like this. Are they shooting at the threat? No, they think they are. Is the threat shooting at them? Yes. And they're doing this. Why? With an empty gun or a malfunctioned gun. Why? Meaning what? How does that translate to them doing this? The, uh, the, the threat was over, and then all of a sudden that just plugged them again, so they go back to. Yeah, but, but why are they shooting with an empty gun? They don't realize it. Why didn't they realize? This gun, you know what the beauty about the semi automatic pistol is? When there's a problem, it's going to tell you and it'll tell you what it is. Well, I'm sorry, it won't tell you, even better, it'll show you. My gun right now is what? Empty. How do you know? Because it's showing us. And we have police officers doing this. So, yes, stress has very adverse effects on us from either inability to see the gun and what has happened or not being able to be connected with what we're doing because we're dominated by the stress. And they're squeezing the trigger, not even feeling, realizing the gun is not firing. If the gun goes empty, it's going to show us. Loud and clear. Simple Hebrew. Simple complicated English. It will show you that it's empty. If I have a double feed, everybody knows what a double feed is, right? Everybody knows what a double feed is? Okay, when I've got two rounds in the, uh, in the chamber or a combination of a round and an, uh, an empty casing, okay? Not this big obstruction. Can we visually identify that? Yes, it'll show us. It'll not shoot, and then if we look at it, we will see the double feed. <laughs> if I have what we refer to as a jam one, a failure to feed or a failure to fire, this is where I squeeze the trigger and the gun doesn't shoot. 
does it show us? It doesn't show us because the slide is locked forward. We know that there's a jam one by virtue of the fact that we squeeze the trigger and nothing happens. What is the remedy for a jam one? Tap and rack. Is that simple? Yes. Is it fast? Yes. What is the most complicated of all the, 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 the malfunctions that we can get, including an empty? What is the most complicated one to remedy? The double feed. The longer process, number one. Number two requires us to also extract the magazine. And that reinsertion of a magazine of a small point into a small point under stress is very complicated. And the second most complicated, or I, not complicated, but longer to do, is remedying reload, remedying an empty. The irony is that the easiest malfunction, the jam one, failure to feed or failure to fire, the quickest one to remedy, doesn't give us a visual indication. But the most complicated ones that are either more complex to remedy or take longer, the double feed or the empty, they tell us loud and clear. You have all seen this, I promise you. If you've been in the business of shooting long enough, you have seen this. If I've seen it more than enough times, I promise you that you have as well. Where you're on the range, in training, and the instructor blows the whistle, the command of up, whatever, the officers go up and they shoot. And then they're done shooting. They come back and they're doing this. And they come to here, and the weapon is like this. And then the whistle goes again, up, and they come up to shoot, and they're like, oh shit. And they have to remedy when they were given the command to shoot. Who here has seen that before on the range? Okay? That is the equivalent, all right? When the whistle goes, when you have to shoot and you realize that you have a malfunction, that is the equivalent on sl slamming on your brakes after your car has left the cliff. You misused the brakes, you didn't understand the application, and or you applied them too late. You understand that? What good does it do for me to finish an engagement, have an empty or a double feed, scan my environment, identify a secondary threat, only then to realize that my gun has a problem. That threat is shooting at me, and I now have to first realize I have a problem, let alone the following steps of remedying it to get back into the fight. It serves no purpose. I finish to engage, the threat is down, what is the first thing that I have to check? It's your weapon. This is your life-saving tool. This, in North America, has killed more police officers than a police officer doing this and suddenly encountering a secondary threat. You understand that? Number one, we check our weapon. It's done two ways. I finish to engage. Immediately, if I've made the cognitive decision to stop shooting, that means that I know to check my weapon. And all I'm doing is just, the weapon is retracting anyways. We never stand here. Weapon is coming back anyways. So as I'm retracting, I'm just slightly canting the weapon up so I can see the ejection port. That's all I need to see. My eyes just glance off of the ejection port as they continue on to the threat. As I'm coming in, a quick little secondary pause just to visually look at the disposition of the ejection port. If it's locked up like this, I assume everything is great. If the threat pops back up, and I have to re-engage, and I pull the trigger and get that, what do I have to do? Tap rack, and I know this already. Out of the list of the three or four different things I might have to do, I don't have to worry about two to three of them. I know what I have to do. Have I saved time and gone back in the fight quicker? Yes. If as I retract and I do my ejection port, I see an empty ejection port, I know what I have to do. If I've decided it's time to stop shooting, that means that I have most likely the time to now quickly take a second or two to reload or remedy a malfunction. So that's number one. I finish to shoot, I quickly, as my weapon comes in, I'm just quickly glancing off the ejection port. That's it, a quick little glance. My weapon goes where at this point? So if I'm going to now do this, where does my weapon go to? <laughs> what are you guys taught? So where, here? Okay, down, inside, okay. I don't really care where it goes. We're going to bring it in nice and tight. It should. Okay, if we're not shooting, we don't want to keep it exposed out there. There's instructors out there that will tell you wherever your eyes go, your weapons go. In Iraq, Afghanistan, Gaza, yes. Not in North America. I don't want to be doing this. All of a sudden realize there's a threat here. and Now I have a much longer process to reorient. So 
my weapon stays in center. So even if right now I'm scanning here, scanning here, if I suddenly have a threat that pops up, I've got a short, even distance to go to, to either which way. What that also allows me to do, <laughs> I visually check my weapon. As my weapon now comes to here, as I'm dealing with the rest of my environment, what is my thumb doing? I'm now physically checking my ejection port. I can feel this. I can feel a double feed. With that, how many of you guys here know of, do, or have been taught that you do low light shooting, night shooting, right? How do you tell that you have a malfunction or an empty with your gun when there's no lights? You have to feel, okay? So even just for low light condition, as I do my visual inspection, I'm also just quickly checking physically, but I don't leave everything to chance. Everything that might better me, I throw at the equation. So as I visually check, my weapon comes down. Before I do the environment, there's another scan I have to do in between weapon and environment. I'll come that in a second. But as I do that, no matter what else I'm doing here now, even if I'm moving, I can continue to visually, or sorry, physically check my weapon to make sure it's still in the fight. So <laughs> we finish the shoot. The first thing that we do is what? Visual inspection of the weapon. Make sure it's still going to save my ass if I have to fight. The time to identify a problem and to remedy it is when you have finished a shoot. If you identify a problem and try to remedy it when it's time to shoot, you're doing things backwards, literally. You understand that? I check my weapon. That is number one. What do I have to check next? What is more probable, again, here in North America? Is it a secondary threat popping up in my environment? Or is it the initial threat suddenly getting back into the fight? The initial threat getting back into the fight. Again, does not exist one case. And I ask everywhere I go, I ask, I ask them all, I ask everybody. My instructors, my commanders, people I teach, other professionals, please tell me one time where this occurred. What you're telling me to do here, tell me one time where it's actually happened. Never in North America has been a case yet where a secondary threat has popped up after that first threat was engaged that I've been able to, to learn of. I check my weapon. My stress level is where right now? It's high. It's high. You're just in a gunfight. It's a scary thing. It changes you inside and out. It affects you. Your heartbeat is pounding like crazy. Your, your mouth is dry. Your breathing is fast. Your adrenaline is pumping. You're, you're shaking. Right? What else? Am I missing anything else? This is what you're going to feel. Stress helps us, but it's also not good for us. It creates tunnel vision. I have to get rid of the stress. How do we get rid of stress? What is the antidote for stress? Oxygen. You got to start sucking in as much air as you can. Start oxygenating the blood. It'll start clearing out the adrenaline. It'll start reducing your stress. I take the time to do that now. So I finish to engage weapon. Sucking in deep breath, and next, what am I scanning? That's number two. The environment, the threat. Focusing on that threat right now. What is he doing? Why did he go down? Is he moving? Does he still have a weapon? I've taken two or three breaths. I'm a little bit calmer. Now, what do I check? The environment. Now, let's talk about checking the environment. It still is not done right. Concept is right, yes. It's been done in the wrong order and it's not done right. So everybody does this. What have I done there right now? What have I done? Have I checked my environment? No. I've just swung my head left and right. That's what everybody does. <laughs> I can be on a range, I can sit here you know, behind an officer, put a gun like this. And you know what happens a lot of times? They check their left, right, and the rear. I'm still here, pointing gun at them. People just enact actions arbitrarily with no purpose behind it. Everything you do in life has to have a purpose behind it. If not, you're just doing the action. You're not benefiting from what that action is. You're wasting time and energy. We are looking all over the place to do what? To collect data. Your eyes do that for you. They have to take that data, they have to identify it, then they gotta take that data to your mind to process. You have to give it time for that to happen, number one. Number two, you have to let the eyes work. 
When you have tunnel vision and you're under stress, you're going through motions, but you're not seeing anything. When I look left, okay, so number one is the actual process of collecting the data. So as I look, I'm always asking myself, what's around me, who's around me, what are they doing? I'm asking myself those questions and I need to give myself a response. I look, I move as slow or as fast as I can while ensuring I'm not missing the answers to that question and collecting the data. Coming from here, I finish your gate. That's number one. I look with a purpose. I collect that data. Move as slow as you need to. Collect the information. There's only so much you can do. Can the bad guy pop up while my head is turned? Yes, and if that happens, that's just your bad luck in that moment in time. There are many things that we're not going to be able to control, and by trying to be faster to try to remedy a possibility, you're causing yourself more harm. You understand that? So number one, I look properly. I'll talk about proper in a sec. I collect the data. Next. Here's what happens. Maybe we've regulated our tunnel vision. Maybe we've opened it up a little bit. We still have an overflow of stress. It's going to happen. It takes a while for it to, to, to kind of simmer down. Everybody does this. I want you guys to kind of see my eyes. Where did I look? Did I look left? Did I look right? Did I look behind? No. And the majority of people simply don't. There's this funnel of a blind spot that everybody turns left, right, and they say left, right, and behind, but nobody actually checks. If I have tunnel vision, I'm here. I'm here, like binoculars. Okay? Let me give myself a little bit of a benefit here. Let me open it up to here. My hands, this hole, this is my vision right now. Look at that hole. You see that? All this cone here doesn't actually get checked. So you can stand right here in the middle, hold the gun. It's an officer in the range behind him. With about 50%, won't even react to you because they won't see you. So when I'm scanning left, I'm actually collecting data, but left ends as far to the beginning of right as possible. I over scan to make sure that even if I have tunnel vision, I'm collecting as much as I can actually behind me. And then I do the same thing this way. You understand that? If I'm covering myself right now, I'm giving myself tunnel vision, so this target, this target, and that target right there. If I naturally turn my head, I can almost see this one, I can see that one if I'm standing in from here. I can't see the one behind me now, but I see this one. If I just put one blinder on here to replicate tunnel vision, I'm giving myself a lot of space here, okay? My hand right now is just past where I can't see it, this hand here. And if I now turn, I'm not seeing that target. I need to be able to actually look behind me while obscuring my vision. Added to that, a little movement that will help. So as I'm turning left to ensure that I get my rear, I might opt to take a step to the right. If I can't use my vision to open up and eat more environment, I will change that relationship of the unknown to my position to now put the unknown into an area that I can visually acquire. Everybody get it? So I'm in from here, finish to engage, weapon, breath, threat, now, You guys see what I do in between scanning left and right? As I scan left, I come back with my eyes closed. They're more probable. Take a half a second, just make sure again, as time has elapsed, that he's still down. That is the proper way of scanning. Those are the proper elements to scan. Weapon, threat, then your environment. Don't leave blind spots while you're scanning, and scan with a purpose. Breathe every step of the way. You're going to need that oxygen. You're going to have to get rid of that stress. Last little thing that you may opt to do, depending on the environment. 
I have been engaging that area throughout this whole encounter. Maybe it started as an investigation, erupted into a gunfight. I have been oriented towards that environment there, that part of it, the majority of the time. It is much more of a known to me than here. So I might opt. I've engaged, weapon, threat. I might opt to now change my relationship so I now put the unknown into an area that's easier for me to acquire both with focused vision and with peripheral vision. Okay? Just something to keep in mind. Any questions on that? Okay. Let's start wrapping it up. Let's start picking up the pace.